This is a morning prayer on Monday, Thursday, Thursday, the 6th of April, 2023. O Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Let your ways be known upon the earth, your saving power among the nations. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be praise and glory forever. As a man of sorrows acquainted with grief, your only son was lifted up that he might draw the whole world to himself. May we walk this day in the way of the cross and always be ready to share its weight, declaring your love for all the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. And from the Lamentations in the Bible. Is it nothing to you, all you who pass by? Look and see if there is any sorrow like my sorrow, which was brought upon me, which the Lord inflicted on the day of his fierce anger. For these things I weep, my eyes flow with tears. For a comforter is far from me, one to revive my courage. Remember my affliction and my bitterness, the wormwood and the gall. But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases, his mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It is good that we should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. For the Lord will not reject forever. Though he causes grief, he will have compassion, according to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he does not willingly afflict or grieve anyone. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now and shall be forever. Amen. The night is past and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind and we keep silence so to do. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever. Amen. And so to Luke chapter 23. Then the assembly rose as a body and brought Jesus before Pilate. They began to accuse him, saying, we found this man perverting our nation, forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor and saying that he himself is the Messiah, a king. Then Pilate asked him, "Uh, are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, you say so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, "I, I find no basis for an accusation against this man. But they were insistent and he said, Uh, He stirs up the people by teaching throughout all Judea from Galilee, where he began even to this place. When Pilate heard this, uh, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And when he learned that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him off to Herod, who was himself at Jerusalem at the time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had been wanting to see him for a long time because he'd heard about him and was hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at some length, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him. Even Herod, with his soldiers, treated him with contempt and mocked him. Then he put an elegant robe upon him and sent him back to Pilate. That same day, Herod and Pilate became friends with each other. Before this, they had been enemies. Pilate then called together the chief priests, the leaders and the people, and he said to them, "Uh, "'You bought me this man as one who was perverting the people.' And here I have examined him in your presence and have not found this man guilty of any of the charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. Indeed, he has done nothing to deserve death. I will therefore have him flogged and I will release him. They shouted out together, away with this fellow, release Barabbas for us. This was the man who'd been put in prison for an insurrection that had taken place in the city and for murder. Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again, but they kept shouting, crucify him, crucify him. A third time he said to them, why? What evil has he done? I have found in him no grounds for the sentence of death. I will therefore have him flogged and then release him. But they kept urgently demanding with loud shouts that he should be crucified and their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict that their demand should be granted. 
He released the man they asked for, the one who had been put in prison for insurrection and murder, and he handed Jesus over as they wished. I've been reading you this week some poetry from my favourite poet, uh, John O'Donoghue, the priest and author. Uh, and uh, he wrote a series of poems called The Sorrowful Mysteries, Sorrowful Mysteries, and that is for this Holy Week. And this poem is called The Carrying of the Cross. A kiss on the back of the neck tingles, almost sound, a breath of music in bone. It is here they lay the heavy crossbeam, each step a thud inward like sick thunder. It invades his head, all silence leaves him. Stoop forward he watches his innocent feet search each step for sure ground to take his weight. He falls face first on the broken pavement. Those he knows to see will not meet his eyes. They fear his gaze might unleash misfortune. Sweat down his back opens a line of wounds. A white towel absorbs a mirage of his face. Windows open in the crowd. His heart rends at the weeping of his mother and friends. The Carrying of the Cross by John O'Donoghue. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Let us bring to the Father our prayers of intercession through Christ, who gave himself for the life of the world. For forgiveness of the many times we have denied Jesus, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For grace to seek out those habits of sin which mean spiritual death, and by prayer and self-discipline to overcome them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Christian people, that though through the suffering of disunity, there may be growing a rich union in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who make laws, interpret them and administer them, that our common life may be ordered in justice and mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who still make Jerusalem a battleground, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who have the courage and honesty to work openly for peace and justice, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those in the darkness and agony of isolation, that they may find support and encouragement, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who weighed down with hardship, failure and sorrow, feel that the God is far from them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who are tempted to give up the way of the cross, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we, with those who have died in faith, may find mercy in the day of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. And so to the collect for this day. Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards the human race sent your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Grant that we may be, follow his example uh, of his patience and his humility and also made partakers of his resurrection through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, 
who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Standing at the foot of the cross, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. May Christ, who bore our sins on the cross, set us free to serve him with joy. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.